Good morning, and welcome to Alfredo YouTube channel. Today, going over the build. So the rabbit right now is in New Hampshire. Tis waiting, and I have been specking out everything I would like to do to it. Well, to a degree. Everything I can afford, kind of, to do to it. So, you got a couple things kind of planned in the sense of like there's different facets of the car I want to address. First off, the engine currently is not thriving. If you've been watching, then you'll recall that first we had the eBay turbo blow up and run pieces through the motor. Uh, and then secondly, we did something to it when dynoing. So post dyno, it is misfiring really badly. I haven't actually taken the motor apart yet to diagnose what it is. Uh, my gut suspicion is that we bent a rod. Um, so if you recall, there is a turbo carnage video in which I described engine wear that I observed. And so what's been happening is the intake manifold is incredibly poorly designed from the factory. Uh, and I'm still using a factory intake manifold. So what happens is all that compressed turbocharger air and propane and fuel end up mostly going into cylinder number two, the way the manifold is laid out. Because cylinder number two is directly under it and there's no kind of baffles or anything to redistribute that air better. So what I think happened is we spiked the crap out of cylinder pressure in cylinder number two and we most likely bent the rod in that cylinder. But we shall find out, that is my speculation. In light of that, the engine rebuild I will be doing is gonna involve a few things. First off, across the board, I'm gonna be doing everything myself. So normally I would take an engine to an engine shop, but right now every engine shop I've called to has a three month lead time and is gonna like rack me up so many dollars. So we're just gonna do it ourselves. Tear it down. You know, so as we're tearing it down, we're going to take the head off, measure piston protrusion. So if here is the top of the block, right? Here's the top of where the cylinder head meets the lower half of the engine. The pistons protrude a certain amount across the board. And so we're going to measure piston protrusion at top dead center. And that's how we're going to figure out if we ended up squishing a rod or not. Then we're going to tear down the bottom end. We're going to put it on a stand. We're going to pull everything out. We're going to do piston rings so i don't want to buy new pistons they're expensive and i think they're fine but we're going to put fresh rings in there because we've had a fair amount of metal chunks go through in the last couple months we're gonna swap out the rods i even have rods already i just didn't have the tool to press the wrist pins so we're gonna go ahead and get that tool we're gonna put uh their h-beam rods so they're gonna be quite a bit stronger than what was in there hopefully gonna avoid this you know that failure point. And while everything's out, we're going to go ahead and hone the cylinders because they have some, not scoring, but you know, they kind of weared fast. Haste. <laughs> since, since last I had it rebuilt, so we're going to give those a quick hone using a honing tool and a drill. We're going to do it ourselves. So the interesting silver lining here is that you guys are going to get to see an entire engine tear down and rebuild documented by myself. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but you'll probably learn something. And then to avoid the same failure point, right? We're putting in stronger rods, but we still most likely have a really overly screwed up cylinder two relative to the others, right? It's getting more fuel, more air, more everything. And that's it's not what you want. It's gonna make the engine uneven and it's gonna make it unreliable. So I'm actually gonna get an intake manifold and it's actually for a TDI head, which means it's slightly different port shapes. So we're also going to, while adapting that, we're gonna go ahead and port my head lightly enough to match up with this new intake manifold. So the hope is with the better intake manifold, we'll have really good flow distribution We'll have better flowing head anyways because we're porting it slightly. Rods, a fresh head gasket, new rings. We'll have a fresh motor that is more robust in the ways that it has been failing. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so then next on the docket is the transmission rebuild. So if you've noticed across several videos, the transmission makes a horrific sound when you push the clutch in. That would be the throwout bearing failing miserably. So 
we're just going to give it like a light, a light tear down and rebuild. So what that looks like is I definitely need to do the throwout bearing because it sounds terrible. New cap to cover that throwout bearing. We're going to do both axle seals. That's a common failure point. We're going to do the gearbox output seal. So that's what goes around your output shaft that goes, connects to the motor and clutch. We're going to do the clutch pushrod seal and the clutch pushrod bushing. So basically all the common wear points in the transmission are going to get replaced. None of them are particularly exciting, but it will just keep the darn thing going a little bit longer. And so that is all we're going to do with the transmission. The brakes. Now this is something I have never really screwed with on this car. You know, it's been an old Volkswagen for so long. I was like, fine, it can have old Volkswagen brakes. But really the issue with the braking system is that it's underpowered. When you step on the brake, the car doesn't stop fast enough. You can stand on that thing. Still doesn't stop fast enough. And to make matters worse, right, it's a factory vehicle. So it comes with a brake booster. It's, you're getting a power assist on your braking, which is really just making it even more spongy. So what we're going to do is rip all of that shit out. The original master cylinder the brake booster. We're probably gonna get into the pedals too because they're chintzy. We're gonna go ahead and rebuild it, except for some of the really expensive. Things. So we're gonna put vented rotors on there with slots, uh, drills and slots, and those kind of help keep your braking surface fresh. To replace that brake booster and master cylinder, we're just going to do a master cylinder. You go, how can you get rid of a mechanical assist? That doesn't make sense. But the interesting thing is brakes are entirely a pressure-based hydraulic system, so when you want more pedal force, you either change your leverage, so you can make your pedal longer, right? It's a lever. You know, I want to keep that the same, because I like where the pedals are. So what we're going to do is change the master cylinder. If you want more braking force, so easier brakes to push on or more effectiveness with the amount of force you're applying with your foot is you actually size down your master cylinder. So I think right now it's about 0.85 inches is the stock master cylinder and I'm going to go down to a 0.75 inch master cylinder. And because you have a smaller area you're applying force to, you're creating more pressure in the brake lines with the same cylinders at the wheels so you're actually going to have more braking force so we're gonna size down the master cylinder we're gonna add a brake bias block so it's gonna go something like master cylinder front brake lines and then there'll be a valve an adjustable valve and then there'll be the rear brake lines and the reason for that is you don't want your rears to get the same amount of braking pressure as your fronts because you will lose traction in the back first so all the associated parts for that, likely quite a bit of fab work to make everything fit. And uh, so those are all the things. We got the engine rebuild, the transmission rebuild, a sway bar, and the brake rebuild. The end of this build, I hope that the car is just like a super solid race car. You know, I want it to stop fast. I want it to go fast. I want it to have it so you can wail on the thing and the engine doesn't break. I want the transmission to survive. All these things. So that is what is to come. We are going to get this thing ship shape for some competition season. Gonna autocross it a bunch. Take it to the drag strip. All the above. And then that most likely will find another round of weak points on which we can build. One more thing, I just want to take a minute to say a huge thank you to people that have been helping this channel, the car, me along. One is certainly my brother Harry. He's usually behind the camera, sometimes chirping in videos, sometimes editing videos, and he's been a huge supporter of this the whole time. The other is you guys. You keep biting, chomping at the bit, asking good questions, asking for content, wondering what's going on. It's great. It keeps me building, keeps it going. Now, the one thing is sometimes progress is slow because I actually can't pay for it. You know, it's a car, it's not, doesn't get me from point A to point B. You really aren't supposed to drive it on the road, but I do anyways. So it has very little practical value besides that it's sick and I want to keep it going. So 
in lieu of that, I made these sweet freaking die cut stickers here for $5 a piece. All of those $5, besides what it costs to ship them to you beautiful people, will go exactly into the rabbit build. So the point of selling stickers is that you get to support the build, which is sick. Not only do you get a sweet freaking sticker I designed myself, that looks pretty darn good, says Volkswagen and Turbo Diesel, with the rabbit, with a hood stack, come on. Where else are you gonna get that sticker? Point being, buy a sticker, put it on things you like, they're cool, they support the build, all $5 goes towards the car, slot them on a water bottle, shows some love, all such things, and in coming soon, hopefully, is Rabbit Gen 5? I'm not really sure which build version this is we're on now, I'll have to think about it harder later, but we're gonna do brakes, we're gonna do engine rebuild, we're gonna do transmission stuff, we're gonna add a sway bar, we're gonna make the thing super bomb proof, we're gonna videotape it all, and upload it so y'all can learn and see what's, what's going, going on. on. And then we'll probably re-dyno it or take to the track or all of the above. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Our Federer YouTube channel. Buy a sticker. Link in description. Thanks, y'all.